Hi, Coach. Good morning. Thanks for doing this for us today. Yeah, sure. Uh, hey, we, we got a ch chance to talk with Harrison Phillips. Uh, he really took us to the depths of his rehab, both physically and emotionally. And, you know, how happy he was, even knew it was 330 days since he was back on the field with pads on uh, with his teammates. What was that like for you, you know, to kind of watch him go through that, uh, to be there, you know, virtually with him, maybe if you will, but also the reward of seeing him finally be able to have all of that pay off and get back on the field. Yeah, that's, uh, that's you know, watching that journey, um, just fascinating to watch how, you know, you go through the, the gamut of, of the emotions where the injury occurred and then, you know, there's a little bit of the, the grieving going on there. And then um, just to see him work to get himself right, to get himself ready to go, uh, not only physically, but mentally as well. Uh, and for him to team together with our docs and, and trainers and the staff, strength and conditioning staff. Um, I mean, really all the way around and through the COVID quarantine time where he could be in the building. Um, I thought, you know, he did a phenomenal job of, of uh, showing great perseverance as well as our, our staff that was able and willing to come in to work with him to help him get to where he is today. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Hey, Coach, keeping with the defensive line, uh, now that you've had pads on for two days, what have you seen in A.J. Epinesa's growth? When we talked to Leslie Frazier last, he just said that A.J.'s really been taking the time to take the playbook in, and, and once they've gotten to the field, it's not like he's lost anything. He seems in place. He seems like he knows what he's doing and understands the playbook better than maybe uh, your average rookie. Yeah, he, you know, I thought he got off to a nice start, uh, Maddie, in terms of playing a couple different positions. And, um, and so really what, he, what he's challenged with right now is being able to digest all that information as the volume has added up so that he can, that he can play fast and really pin his ears back. And that's, that's what we're working on right now. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure. Hey, Sean, thanks for taking a couple of minutes. Um, you know, we talk a lot about how Stephon Diggs is going to help the offense. Can you talk a little bit about how Stephon Diggs is actually going to help the defense as well? Watching him compete the first couple of days of practice, it's, it's pretty fun to watch. Yeah, the, the competitive nature that he brings to our team, I think, is apparent uh, to your point, Josh. And watching him go up against uh, the likes of Trey White and Levi Wallace, uh, Josh Norman, just to name, name a few, um, has, been, has been fun. I know Josh from, from our time together in Carolina, and certainly I know Levi and, and, uh, and Trey both and their competitive spirits as well. So that, that competition is a big part of our football team, and not just at that position, but all positions. And that's where uh, guys that have that dog mentality, if you will, uh, and are able to you know, flip the switch on when they, uh, when they come on the field and, and, and flip it off when they go off the field, that's important as well. So uh, that's a big part of building a competitive football team. Thanks, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean. Um, just wondering about Ed Oliver. He hasn't been able to get going in practice uh, just yet. Um, what is his outlook looking like? And is there any concern for you guys about with such a short ramp up time to the start of the regular season here that uh, he might miss some time? Yeah, we've had some guys miss some time. Uh, it's always a concern regardless of who it is because of uh, the short ramp up time in particular, Joe. So got a little bit of a hip uh, thing going on right now, soreness there. Um, you know, we think he'll have it knocked out in a couple days uh, from now. So we're encouraged by his progress as of the last couple of days and anxious to get him back. Hey, Sean, how you doing this morning? Um, yeah, I, I know Gabe missed practice yesterday and Isaiah's been in red, but I was wondering, what are your impressions on these two rookie receivers so far? Uh, we heard Smoke say last week that uh, they've been teaching the vets. They've been helping the vets with the playbook. And uh, curious if there are any more advanced for rookie receivers as you've ever seen. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think Smoke was being a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, overly nice um, and humble. So, yeah, I mean, look, we've, we've got uh, – and those two, two young players that are off uh, to a good start. A lot of runway yet in front of them in terms of the work that has to be done. Uh, one of which is getting on the field, being available. Um, as you mentioned, both were 
limited uh, or out yesterday. So uh, we'll just see how the next couple of days unfold. To this point, um, they've done a good job, uh, again, with, uh, uh, with a lot of work to be done yet. Thanks, hey, Sean. Hopefully, no more. Sorry, Marcel. Uh, hey, Sean Jay with the Buffalo News. Uh, Taron Johnson, it seems like he plays with the edge that you really appreciate among your defensive backs, but not being the biggest guy, that's kind of led to some bumps and bruises uh, his first couple of years. How do you find that balance between the two where he, where he has to play with that physical edge to succeed, but keeping him healthy? Yeah, it is a balance. Um, you know, the way he plays, we like that dog, that dog mentality, as I mentioned earlier, uh, his physical edge, uh, the competitive nature that he has. And I should have mentioned him as well. Highly competitive young man. Um, you know, it really all starts with how he takes care of his body, you know, his workout program, his workout regimen in the off season. Um, this is a physical and taxing game as, as we all know. And the only way you're going to stay healthy through a season and, and play a number of years and, and prolong your career is by, is by that uh, proactive approach to, uh, to getting yourself in the right spot mentally and physically. Um, so his conditioning, I think this off season has shown up to this point in camp. He seems ready to go and is playing well. Sean, and to follow quickly, can you just give us your injury rundown? Yeah, so today out, Tommy Sweeney and John Feliciano, uh, Pat DeMarco, Ed Oliver, Robert Foster, and Quentin Jefferson. And then uh, Voshan will be – will continue in the red jersey. And uh, Qu what's Quentin dealing with? Uh, just soreness. Soreness right now in his foot. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Coach, just with respect to Daryl Williams, you know, I know when you guys signed him, Brandon said, you know, a lot of experience at tackle, good enough, good experience at guard. Um, I'm just curious, now that you have him back on the field, how might he have advanced his game since you were last around him on a daily basis back in Carolina? I realize you were coaching the other side of the ball, but what have you seen from him in terms of his game? Yeah, Chris, you know, Number one, he looks healthier than he did than he did year, a couple of years ago, which is good to see. Um, he's played a couple of different positions, to your point, so he offers position flexibility. Uh, this is a young man that uh, you know we feel has yet to play his best football and become the best version of himself. And so we hope that he continues to grow and blossom here in, in Western New York uh, in a Bills uniform. And he seems very comfortable. This seems this area seems to fit him and and his family, uh, from what I've been told, and, um, you know, just very encouraged by his progress to this point. Thank you. Hey, Sean, John Warrow. My there back in the area code. <laughs> Welcome back, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, looking forward to watching practice finally. Um, good to see I you and hope all's well. Hair. I could use some of that what? hair. Oh, there you go. I got to get it finally cut this week. But, <laughs> Um, of all the things that keep you up at night, football related, um, be it, you know, defense, injuries, COVID, all the hope hoops that you've had to jump through, where does Josh Allen's progress and development rank on that list? Oh, I'd say it's at the top of the list. Um, you know, it's, it's been, been fun to watch Josh put in the work in the off seasons, um, to grow his game, develop his game, polish his game. Um, it's also been fun to watch him grow as a leader on our football team. Um, and, and also I would say get to know Josh even more. Uh, obviously we, we, uh, felt like we unearthed a lot of who he was going through the draft process, but until you're around people multiple years, you really don't know him as well as you, as well as you want to. And so now in year three, um, you know, just seeing him grow uh, as a young man on and off the field, has been, been a, been fun to watch and um you know he's he's highly competitive as I mentioned earlier with some of those defensive players Josh is Josh is very similar he, he has that that mindset as we've all seen on the football field and he's competitive to the point um that he wants to continue to grow his game just as much as anyone because just just as a quick follow just because the one narrative outside of Buffalo that I see is the only thing only question mark on this team really is Josh Allen's development where, you know, what do you make of that, of that narrative, I guess? 
Well, I think that that's understandable, um, you know, for a, for a quarterback who most people know who Josh is. And, um, you know, until you're able to um, silence that, uh, it's going to continue to come up. And, and uh, I think, you know, at the end of the day, Josh wants to prove himself inside the building first. And I think he continues to do that and show his teammates who he is and what he's capable of. And, and uh, you know, I've been around some quarterbacks who – started off very much like Josh has and um, have, have developed and played at a high level and Donovan McNabb and Cam Newton. And, um, and so that's, that takes time. And uh, in particular at the quarterback position, there's a lot to balance, uh, but we're encouraged by Josh's development and the time he put in uh, when he was away from us every, every off season, including this off season, he's worked on his game and, and um, he continues to polish game and polish his game and get on the same pitch with, with his receivers uh, over the last couple of weeks now. Thanks so much, Sean. Thanks, Coach. You got time for one more? We'll do one more, yep. Okay, Fairburn, I'll unmute you, sorry. Hey, Sean. Um, now that you've had a couple weeks here, um, you know, at your home facility doing camp, uh, I'm curious how it's compared uh, to having camp at St. John Fisher. And obviously, I know there, this isn't a normal camp at all in a lot of respects, but how is it compared um, in terms of the setup and, and what you're able to get done? Yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously home, right, for us. And and so that's been good. As I mentioned before, without being repetitive, Matt, the the, the extent to which our, our people, our op staff, our, uh, you know, our HR department with Barb Evans and, and the leadership from Kim in this case and, and making sure uh, this building was ready to go and we met all the protocols, just an outstanding effort. Um, you know, that said, I do, I, I am a big fan of going away to, to training camp and I love the, the venue that we have at St. John Fisher. Um, very comfortable for us as well and, and a good chance for us to get away and come together as a team. And so uh, it's certainly a different dynamic being home for the, for, for the weeks of the meat of training camp. Uh, but it's not something that, that um, it's, it's, it's a first for me in my career uh, in the NFL. Uh, but a lot of guys have come from teams where they don't go away as well. So, um, you know, I, I can't be more happy with, with the way the setup has run here. And, um, you know, I really have no complaints. I, I feel good about where we are. And the biggest challenge or probably the biggest challenge would be, can we keep the fields healthy? Uh, because we're on them every day. And so we'll have to rotate them a little bit and, and, uh, and be smart with it.